Good afternoon, dear children. I hope you are all keeping well. We've had very bad day. Even then, I hope all of you all are safe and well. So, children, let's go on with our lesson. Today, we will do revision for the oncoming oral exam in poetry, reading, grammar. and practical good afternoon dear children i hope you are all keeping well children this is a portion for the oral exam the poem the rain in the night and recess reading puzzles in our surroundings pages 8 and 9 the grammar portion nouns and verbs practical to be written on a drawing paper the heading of the proverb then 3 to 5 sentences on that proverb children when you are reciting a poem you first begin with the top name of the poem and the poetess or the poet secondly you have to say the poetry with feeling and pronounce each word properly you don't need to run through the poem so please recite your poem well rain in the night by emilia josephine bur raining raining all night long sometimes loud sometimes soft just like a song there be rivers in the gutters and lakes along the streets it will make a lazy kitten wash his little dirty feet the roses will wear diamonds like kings and queens at court but the pansies all get muddy because they are so short I'll sail my boat tomorrow in wonderful new places. But first, I'll take my watering pot and wash the pansies' faces. Recess. Girls and boys make lot of noise and run and jump and laugh and shout. While here and there, with quiet air. Groups of children walk about. A game begins, but no one wins. Although they play with might and main, for long before the game's over, the bell rings out for school again. Children, when we are doing our reading exam, it is not meant that you have to spell each word and read. you have to read the whole word like the word reading you will not say r e a d i n g reading look at the word and re- read it say it reading so say it fluently stop where there is a full stop or a comma and wait for me to say stop so that the next person can continue from where you are reading Puzzles in our surrounding. Why does it hail even in summer? We feel very hot in summer. The sun shines brightly, and the temperature is high. And then suddenly, there are clouds in the sky, and it starts raining. Not just water, but even small balls of ice. We say it has started. hailing the small balls of ice are called hailstones why does it hail in the hot summer season as we move up from the land the temperature begins to fall up in the sky it is very cold even in the hot season you know that there are water particles in the cloud that we see in the sky 
very high up in the sky. The water particles in the cloud turn into little bits of ice. Sometimes there are strong winds in the cloud. They push these little water bits of ice upward so they do not fall to the ground. They go up and collect more water particles which freezes in on them. Thus the tiny ball get bigger and bigger. They turn into hailstones. The heavy hailstones then fall to the ground in the form of showers. Very tiny hailstones melt before they reach the ground. They turn into raindrops. But some hailstones reach the ground before they melt. A light shower of hail can be a great fun. But a hailstorm can cause great damage to the crop, plants and animals. Maharashtra was hit by a series of hailstorms in 2014. The hailstorm devastated thousands of acres of standing crops. Fruit crops were ruined. Birds and animals were killed and injured in large numbers. Farmers suffered great losses. It was a great natural calamity. You may have other questions that puzzle you. Note down at least 10 such questions on the basis of your observation of things and even in your surrounding. A few examples are given below. Where do flowers get their colors from? Why are leaves green? Why does chopping of an onion make you cry? Note each, note each question on a separate page in your book of science. Draw suitable pictures or paste related photographs on that page. Try to find the answers to your question with the help of your parents, teachers and friends. Make use of science journals and reference books to find the answers. You may find the answers on the internet with the permission and guidance of your parents, guardians or teachers. Browse through the informative website. You may find some of the answers you need in your textbooks or in other informative books. Note down the answers on the relevant pages. When you have collected a few experiments and answers to your questions, put them all together in your own book of science. For grammar, we have noun and its kind. That is proper noun, common noun, collective noun, abstract noun. We also have verbs. The likely questions to be asked are, what is a verb? What is a noun? What is a common noun? What is a collective noun? And what is an abstract noun? We can even ask you a few sentences where you will have to pick up the verb or a noun. Now I will give you the answer to the question I asked you in the previous slide. What is a verb? A verb can tell what action someone or something is doing. A verb can also express a state of being. For example, run, sit, stand, go, have, get, promise, invite, laugh, listen and sing, etc. Now we come down to the next question, what is a noun? A noun is the name of a person, place, thing an animal or idea. For example, dog, cat, elephant, garden, school, work, music, town, etc. Now, the third type of question is, what is a common noun? Common nouns are names of persons, 
places and things and they do not begin with a capital letter for example boy river place etc proper noun what is a proper noun proper nouns are names of specific person place and thing they begin with a capital letter for example rohan andheri and ganges etc a collective noun denote sorry what is a collective noun a collective noun denotes a group of people animal object or idea as a single entity entity means single whole for example herd of cattle swarm of bees flock of birds fleet of sheep band of musicians the last question what is an abstract noun an abstract noun is a name given to things that cannot be seen or touched but can be felt for example friendship childhood love hate laughter hope etc children let us do question number 5 pick out the nouns and state their kinds first sentence pleasure is the worst enemy of man answer pleasure abstract noun man common noun the second sentence there was a large crowd at the circus answer crowd collective noun circus common noun the third sentence i saw a troop of monkeys in the national park the fourth sentence elephant has great wisdom now children the last two answers you will have to write on your own children let's do question number 3 underline the collective noun in the following sentence first one i lost a bunch of keys bunch is a collective noun the army fought against the terrorist bravery army sentence number 3 a big crowd gathered near the accident spot crowd sentence number 4 the indian hockey team won the match against pakistan team sentence number 5 the principal felicitated the guests with a bouquet bouquet the suitable abstract noun from the bracket and fill in the blanks students go to school to gain knowledge knowledge honesty is the best policy honesty rao was known for his bravery bravery gandhi ji believed in non violence good non violence non violence is an abstract noun my brother is scared of darkness good darkness Let's go to the second type of question. Choose a suitable abstract noun from the bracket and fill in the blanks. Truth, necessities, laughter, help, obedience. Dash is the best medicine. Laughter. Dash never grows old. Truth. Dash is the key to every door. Obedience. Dash is the mother of invention. Necessity. Dash is wealth. 
help practical proverb proverb is also a way of wisdom getting wisdom children since we are having a practical exam on, on proverb i would like to explain to you a few proverb and that is how you will have to do it a friend in need is a friend indeed it means a friend who helps you at the hour of need or when you are in trouble is a true friend you can rely on such a friend a stitch in time saves nine means it is better to fix a problem when it is small than to wait for it to become a bigger problem for example if you do your homework now you will save time later practice makes a man perfect it means doing our work frequently makes one better at doing it like if we practice our maths or any of our weak subject we get better at doing it and we may score better marks not children the last uh, proverb is very important for you slow and steady wins the race mean even if you are slow in doing your work studying or writing or anything it will finally become more helpful to you than being hasty in writing or careless in writing and getting your work just to get your work done Thank you children please revise your work properly and all the best for your coming oral exam be safe take care and god bless you all